So I'm going to talk about the cognitive science mind, and I'm going to find out a place for logics as tools for paracon system logics as tools for a project in in the line that I em embrace when <coughs> thinking about the the mind and, and the cognitive sciences. And I'm gonna say a lot of names that some of you yeah. may yeah. may not like, but maybe in the end you can ask me about that. Um, let's go. Well, the traditional uh, approaches to cognition, which can be labeled widely as cognitivism, usually work with a two-floor model. The first floor is re re regarded as a basis composed of sense data, first internal motivations, and automatic, automatic bo bo bodily processes. The second floor is built over this basis and is composed by language and all the higher order capacities associated with it, such as rationality, concept use, representation, and justification. Right? The underlying idea here is that there is no cons constitutive difference between how the basic fe features of Co co cognition such as experience happen to linguistic and non-linguistic animals. Linguistic cap capacities here are understood just as an adjective, as an as an external tool to organize what experience gives to us. And on the on the other front, the transformative perspective would claim that language acquisition transforms cognition all the way down to how we experience things and uh, uh, ourselves. The claim will be that there is a radical discontinuity between the experience of linguistic and non-linguistic animals. Recent authors like John McDowell, Robert Brandon, and Charles Taylor have made great contributions to enlighten such transformation. There are also classic thinkers who, in varying the degrees of explicitness, have embraced this idea, for example, Heidegger, Wittgenstein, and Frege. And there is also empirical work in psychology and linguistics, like that of Tomasello, that points to this place. And on the other hand, uh, in the last in the last years, decades really, uh, embodied and situated approaches to cognition have gained ground both in the philosophy of mind and, and in cognitive science, with a profound <laughs> criticism to cognitivism. Uh, and these approaches can be found in different places in in a, in, a, in an active theory, in in ecological psychology, in 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 phenomenological uh, approaches to mind and expertise from, from authors like Drive to Gallagher, Sahabi, and in the excellent mind of Clark and Chalmers, even though they are they, they embrace a certain form of cognitivism, I I I think. Um, um, so one of the key criticisms that supported, embraced, embodied, and situated approaches both in cognitive science and AI is that of accounting for relevance. The idea is that having general rules program does not account for how we are able to deal with real world situations. An AI program with a set of rules and representations for dealing with real world situations can not account for how we know which of those rules are relevant depending on the situation, right? This came to be known as the frame problem. Uh, this was, they tried to solve this, uh, Minsky and MIT and Arshul, uh, with, with the inclusion of frames in, in the programs, right? Which, which will be 
descriptions of typical seed, seed, seed situations, like going to a party to list and organize those, and only those facts that were normally important in that, in that case. But then the AI will need frames to recognize frames, so we are caught in a, in a regress of frames for recognizing relevant frames. So this is where Go, Go file fail, which is great old-fashioned artificial intelligence. And when it, it had to deal with common sense knowledge in, a, in, in, our, uh, in real world cases, no? like going to a party like, or coming here or going on a date, whatever. Um, this is where embodied and situated cognition came in hand. The insight brought by these new approaches to cognition was that rigid and, ge ge and general rules weren't the, weren't the way to go, but that the, the model of intelligent behavior is a dynamic relation be, be between an embodied agent and its environment. Uh, many interesting concepts are, are on this line, like body environment, dyn dynamics, skillful coping, affordances, and others. Uh, the new objective for AI and the cognitive scientists embracing these views uh, was to model the environment, the body environment dynamics through which an intelligent agent copes and self-organizes to adapt to, to constantly changing situations, right? So in this view, cognition is not something stable, static, but in in here in the plastic. And the and the formal tools used for modeling this was the introduction of the dynamical systems theory, which is a, which is a theory of mathematics. Uh, but what happens here? This is a uh, most embodied and situated approaches to cognition generally keep the tutor model of cognitivism. The, Role of language for sen sense making is either left on redress or is regarded as an epiphenomenon of body environment dy dynamics. This happens because most thinkers uh, in this line regard linguistic capacity to together with concepts and rationality as something intrinsically linked to the rigidness of traditional cognitivism, which emphasized computation, general rules, and representation. My claim, uh, and this is my project for my PhD, which I don't have funding yet, but <laughs> my claim is that it is necessary to integrate the transformative perspective with embodied and situated approaches to cognition. Um, my strategy is to show that linguistic capacity and all the higher order capacities associated with it can be understood di di dynamically. The idea is to show that the environment we inhabit as human beings is discursively shaped and that we are introduced to it thanks to the acquisition of language. Language then will be understood as a feature of human life that permeates its body environment dy dynamics. Embodied and situated cognition thinkers have been influenced mainly by the embodied phenomenology of mer merlophone on, on this, sorry. Uh, but I mean to complement this with the concept of world that can be found in the her hermeneutic phenomenology of Heidegger and Gadamer. 
the world in this author is a discursive environment we inhabit as human beings. Moreover, language acquisition happens in interactions, which means that, that the discursive environment we inhabit is always public, uh, meaning and justification in, in this frame can only be understood in that way. Authors such as Brandon and McDowell, who have been influenced deeply by Gadamer, shows how to think about rationality and just and justification in a more in a more plastic way. Brandon's logical expressivism and inferentialism and McDowell's theory of perception are examples of this. Rationality can be stopped dynamically if we defend the primacy of practical rationality in a Kantian sense, meaning that rationality is to be thought dialogically at the game of giving and asking for reasons. It is a way of making sense of the world we inhabit as social animals. It is a feature of the life of a social and linguistic animal. And so this is where I found a place for for some systems of paragon system logic as formal tools for enhancing a read a research program in this way. And I wanted to take, for instance, the adopted to logics of patents, who is who is here. So I'm, I am really ashamed. Of. I'm going to be talking about it. <laughs> and because the idea is that just as dynamic systems of mathematics have been used to model the, the dynamics of embodied cognition, adaptive logic can, can be used to model the dynamics of reasoning, right? Uh, Batens emphasizes that adaptive logic uh, applies to consequence relations in which we have no positive tests, which are actually the consequence re relations we encounter not only when making science but in everyday dealings. And, and so adaptive logic uh, pro provides both external and internal dynamics. And we all talk about this and so I'm going to skip that part. And the idea is that adaptive logic uh, Give, gives us a means to model how reasoning is not uh, an static thing and adapts to changing situations and also how we may accept provisional good reasoning but are also ready to review previous conclusions, right? And secondly, I wanted to talk about uh, the discursive logic of Jankowski's and uh, which is a logic that models discourse in model logic. Um, a sentence holds in discourse if it is true that if it is true at some world end, but but of course it may hold in in one world, but but not in another. As it is expected that in discourse there will be disagreements, right? So this course of logic uh, gives the means to sh to to show how in discourse we are not static, rigid, but getting to partial agreements which are not. Real, right? Even though our whole body of beliefs need not to be, um, to be the same. Excuse me, exactly. but the time is over. Time is over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, uh,